Hello and welcome to PlayStation Access and to another of our top 10 lists, where we raid the contents of the PS4 library and pick out our favourites from each genre that everybody should try. This time it's driving games, an exercise in becoming absolutely at one with a vehicle and pushing both synapses and machinery to new limits. Driving games provide a safe space where the real competition comes from within, and as such there's absolutely no shame in losing. Isn't that right, me from two years ago, losing at Crash Team Racing on stage at EGX? There's nothing I can do now. Oh, mate, mate, mate. I mean, that was a total fluke that he managed to win that, but whatever, as always, the games are in no particular order, and we're keeping to only one entry per series. Now let's get to them before whoever's editing this video tries to embarrass me with any more examples of... Making sure she doesn't kill me. Right, we've already won. I pressed jump! There we go, save the best till last. Very well played. For some reason, it's just not work. It's like lasting. Oh, for goodness goodness sake. Sake. All right, that's go. done. Oh, <laughs> yeah, hold on to that. Oh, now it's gone. Ah. Okay, fine. Fine. Driving games, like all games, are about either winning or hating yourself. Here are ten of them. Oh, oh the there club. it no. is. Okay, luckily I just one race <laughs> without someone using the lit it's literally cheating, isn't it? Number one, Gran Turismo Sport. You know just how serious Gran Turismo Sport is about being an honest to goodness driving simulator the first time you press the brake. Here it comes, look, a perfectly reasonable corner that I've already messed up because the braking point was ages ago and yes, now I'm in the gravel, churning up a big cloud of embarrassing dust that all the other cars will laugh at. When you brake in GT Sport, you suddenly realise that you're in charge of all this weight and that to actually convince it through a turn you have to pay attention to exactly where that weight is. In some games it can feel like you're basically steering a floaty little camera, but Polyphony Digital's cars feel you like cars. This seventh entry in the series is all about online competition with different license levels according to your results and how clean your race, so using other people as a crash barrier to guide you round corners, aka the strategy we all used throughout Gran Turismo's 1-6, to is off the menu here. But that's okay because in return you get a racing sim so realistic that some of its esports champions have gone on to real motorsport careers. In fact, Dave, wasn't that your plan as well? Yeah, that's right. Back to pretending you're good at Warzone. Wipeout Omega Collection, our next entry in our top 10 best driving games, somehow manages to be as 90s as a Prodigy album soaked in Lynx Africa, and yet feels absolutely contemporary at the same time. Wipeout was an absolute belter from the PS1 days that properly captured a sense of speed and danger whenever you hurled a Fizar into the next convoluted knot of floaty sci-fi track. The Omega Collection features remasters of Wipeout HD and its Fury expansion, along with Wipeout 2048, all in crisp 1080p. Or, on PS4 Pro, glorious 4K. Honestly, there isn't anything else quite like it. Those race-changing power-ups, that lithe handling, somewhere between driving a car way too fast through a futuristic nightclub and piloting a flipping fighter jet. This impossibly satisfying little sound you get when you gently graze a corner with your wing. Oh, yes. Race complete. Dirt Rally 2 is next in our top 10 driving games, and this is driving in the most uncompromising, rigorously simulated sense. Your first try at this game will probably feel more like a round of Octodad than anything. You'll watch a hatchback lollop around in the mud, sort of doing what you intended, but also sort of smacking into trees and sliding off into a soggy Welsh ditch. But after a while, something happens. You stop thinking in straight lines and braking zones, 
lines like those squares on the racetrack and start approaching Dirt Rally 2 as one constant power slide. It's like balancing on a tightrope that's been wound throughout the course ahead of you. You know, you're never quite perfectly straight, but also never letting the back end go too far out. It's a game about mastering the fundamental challenge of herding a car over loose surfaces. And on those terms, Dirt Rally 2 is a resounding victory. Five, four, three, two, one. Into five right of a crest, 18, four left. Now, I could try to tell you how good our next entry, Burnout Paradise Remastered, is, but regular viewers will know Nathan got the Platinum on the original 2008 game and then did it all over again a decade later when the remaster came out, so who better to convey its brilliance than the man who earned the double plat? Take it away, Nathan. I'm actually really glad you've asked because Burnout Paradise is a game which I think not only has to be played twice but really platinum twice to fully understand the complexity. It really gets to the root, the physicality of cards. You have touching other things is, is verboten, right? You're trying to go as fast as you can. You might. It's what would happen if we took all of this completely beautifully con- oh, Okay, forget that. It's like listening to someone speaking Latin. What Criterion did with Burnout Paradise was take a load of cars and drop them into a Tony Hawk's game. It's an explorable playground of platforming puzzles, stunts, and basically opportunities to feel like an absolute boss on four wheels. And then what they did 10 years later was made it all look brilliant again, which provides the perfect excuse to go back in and realize how ahead of its time Criterion's open world concept was. Still, doing the Platinum twice, I mean, that is crazy. That's about three playthroughs of Skyrim I'd be giving up, not a chance. SnowRunner is a game about driving really quite slowly and making deliveries. I know that doesn't sound terribly exciting. In fact, I've deliberately made it sound totally uneventful just then for dramatic effect. But the point is, it's not a game that's going to summon old memories of blur or split-second velocity. In fact, it's really more like a puzzle game that you happen to be playing whilst inside a car. You know, there's the bridge you need to repair, there are the parts you need to source, and there's a really hard-to-cross section of muddy gravel tracks you'll need to navigate to get it all done. Go to it. But if, like me, you take pleasure in just watching the mud deform underneath your tyres and feeling every minute bump in the road through your jewel shock, every journey in SnowRunner is a low-key thrill. If we're being absolutely cards on the table honest here, the real Formula One can be a bit dry sometimes. OK, Daniel, gap to car in front is closing. We think you can catch him within the next 57 laps. Front wing damage sustained, Max. You will need to box. Box, box, box. And that's the championship. Well done, Lewis. Engine mode one. Pick up rubber. So F1 2020 is a bit of an anomaly in that actually it ends up doing the sport it's licensed to simulate better than the real thing. There's loads more overtaking, loads of driver changes between seasons and, particularly if you head into the online races, more crashes than an entire season of real racing condensed into three steward ruining laps. Recent additions to the series have introduced and expanded an RPG style upgrade path system to career mode so you can take a Williams and diligently plug away in practice sessions season after season until one day it's the fastest car on the grid. And in this game, you can even start a team from scratch, picking the colour scheme and everything. It's a bit like taking the wide-eyed, innocent protagonist out of his cosy woodland village in an RPG and training them up to beat the silver-haired, emotionless antagonist who's hell-bent on destroying the world. Except in F1 2020, you get to stand on a podium afterwards and be all smug about it as well.
Welcome to Topsy Turvy Land, where Dave has all the Platinums. I managed to finish every game I'm playing before the next one comes out, and not smashing into other cars and ruining their races is frowned upon. Welcome to Wreckfest, where the usual rules go out of the window. Bodywork lasts exactly one corner before jettisoning from its host in a joyous arc, and you get all the catharsis for all those jerk moves that online opponents have been putting on you in basically every other racing game since forever. Crashing is a genuinely beautiful thing here, the physics so attuned to every bit of contact that you can't help but enjoy every coming together, even if it means you come out worse off from it than the other driver. In the same way, it's inherently enjoyable to see water behave properly when your character wades through it in other games, or their feet climb the stairs properly. Often the pleasure in Wreckfest comes from seeing your car deform and going, yes, that's right. Right, that is what would happen if I drove an old banger into a tyre wall at 60 miles an hour. We've all had that dream where we can fly, haven't we? Although, admittedly, in mine, it's usually not so much about road trips across America and more along the lines of my sister's a cat and she's reminding me I haven't done any university coursework for the last 16 years and, oh my God, why am I wearing a wedding dress? Still, there's something about the way you can just freely change between supercars, boats and planes in the crew too that really captures the giddy freedom of those flying dreams. It doesn't make a millimetre of sense, but it turns this open world racer from basically need for speed with a really, really big map to something more meditative, something whose objectives are defined by you, the player. There are hundreds of events for each vehicle type and an upgrade system to keep you interested long term, but often the best fun here is in just getting some mates together online, picking a far off spot on the map of the USA and letting the road trip stories write themselves. Three. If you'd have asked 2003 me what the absolute coolest thing ever was, cars with neons underneath them would have come just above the first two parts of the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy and that song from The Matrix that's all like... Which is to say Need for Speed was right at the beating heart of pop culture in the early 2000s and Need for Speed Heat, the most recent entry, really captures everything that was great about the series back when it topped the Christmas charts with more certainty than an X Factor winner. You can go deep into customising your car here, putting vents and aero bits in places that would probably make the original vehicle designers cry into their hands. You can smother cars in so many vinyls that they look like three different club night flyers having a fight, and then you take them out to the streets where they behave exactly as you'd want them to, squirming around under traction without demanding GT Sport levels of concentration. There was a time when I would go on and on about how good I was at Crash Team Racing without any real danger of being cooled out because it was a PS1 game and if you wanted to challenge me you'd have to get your old PS1 out of the spare room and then realise you didn't have the SCART lead anymore and then buy one on Amazon, wait for it to arrive, set it all up to check it worked and then invite me round in person to hand your ass back to you. Now it's a PS4 game with online multiplayer which has taught me that outside the bubble of that fierce decades long rivalry I've shared with my sister it turns out I'm actually not the best Crash Team Racing player in the world. That was a t everyone was at each other's necks. Woo. It's testament to how flipping good this game is that I still love it. Regular viewers will know I've always held it up as the best karting game on any platform, and I really do stand by that. The tracks are just such a pleasure to unknot and find your lines in, uncovering little shortcuts here and there, and the boosting, oh the boosting. If you get good enough, you're always emitting coloured exhaust smoke, thinking two turns ahead while you drift through this one. And yes, Emperor Velo's ghosts and and now the developer times are absolutely impossible and will make you scream into a cushion on numerous occasions, but let's not get into that. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is simply an amazing game.
So there you go, the top 10 best driving games on PS4. Let us know in the comments if you agree with our selections or if you think there's a game we've missed. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and click that notification bell so you're always up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation.